everybody, it's me, Margaret. I'm back with another video, and I've got a lot to talk about this time, including some really good viewer suggestions based on that last video I did where I was blocking acrylic. I had some really good ideas to share, and we'll get to that in a minute. But first, I want to talk about this corner to corner. You may recognize this portion of it as being something from Repeat Craft to Me, but I actually did something different here. Can you see the butterflies? So he's looking up at butterflies. Now there's a story about how this came to be. Looking for my next project, and again, I'm gonna do corner to corner. I'm on a kick right now, and so I went to Repeat Craft Me, Sarah Zimmerman, which I adore all her projects that she puts on there. And this was clearly a Halloween afghan, which I thought was really, really cute. Now, I have plenty of this purpley color, this lavender, and I have plenty of black, so that's another reason why I was drawn to this, but I thought, I wonder if I could make this a year-round blanket instead of one that was specifically for Halloween, so how might I do that? Well, first of all, I could change the inside of the kitty's ears to pink, so let's get rid of the um, combination of orange, purple, and black, which is a traditional Halloween combination, and added something besides a spider. So how might I do that? Well, I used some computer skills and I made a little blank canvas here. I also went on this wonderful little site. It's uh, lots of pixel art on there. So I found these little butterflies. And yes, I could have continued to use the computer and actually colored in the exact butterflies right in there and then printed it out as one piece of paper. However, editing Margaret here, I'm gonna interrupt this long-winded explanation just to tell you that I was lazy and I thought I could do it faster just by printing it and literally cutting it out old school style. Now hang with me here because as we all know, shortcuts can be great, efficient even, but we can also trip ourselves up sometimes. So what happened? So that's what I think I'm going to attempt next. Okay, true to form, I often make mistakes and I use this as fodder for my video. I think it's important. Yes, I call this sheepishly sharing because once upon a time I was very sheepish about this and now I decided, nope, it's who I am. So here's the deal. Remember all this clever stuff I told you about what I did with the copying and pasting old school style? Well, it didn't work because my squares were not as close in size as I thought. And I got all discombobulated and confused. So I had to go back and use the computer skills to actually create myself a new pattern like this. In a nutshell, I used Google Drawings, which is free if you have a Google account. And the reason I use this instead of Google Docs, which is a typical word processor, is because you can actually layer pictures upon pictures. Let's kind of reverse engineer this so you can see what I did. So basically, I, I pasted a picture here of the original diagram. I knew that I wanted to replace this little guy right here. So what I did was I copied and pasted this portion of the blank purple squares, lavender squares, and then I covered it up. That's actually just a picture on top of the picture. And if you know about this little site, it's a pixel site. It's actually made for bracelets bracelet.book.com but because bracelets are made with pixel art it's perfect for corner to corner or cross stitch or anything that you want to do that uses pixel art and i found these little butterflies which would be just the right size and essentially i pasted those on top of my grid here like that what i ended up doing was taking this image putting it into another app which is like Photoshop but it's actually paint.net it's free and then I just recolored see how I did that and then of course pasted it in here and resized it to make sure that it completely aligned with all the the uh, grids that I have below there and you could easily move these around you know any way you wanted I happen to like it right there now I didn't take the time to recolor the eyes or the ears even though I chose to do green eyes and pink ears I'd use the same green that I used in the eyes up here in my butterfly so that I could kind of tie those colors in that's how I modified the original pattern 
so it's closer. It's not exact, but it's much closer. And so that meant that I had to rip out a lot of what I had done, probably about four rows, three rows, I think it was. So it's not that bad, but because it's so much, I'm just gonna stand right here and <laughs> work those few rows back in because it's easier to manage the yarn that way. You know, you gotta stick with it. Now, while making this blanket, I have two interesting tidbits that I picked up and learned that I wanna talk about. Well, first of all, let's understand that working on a blanket of any kind is sometimes a little awkward, okay? You're, you know, you're doing one side and then you have to flip it over and you have to do the other side and you're managing and situating and getting it just at the right angle that you like so you can comfortably continue on with what you're doing, right? Well, normally that's not that big of a deal except for with corner to corner, you also have that yarn management because you've got all the different colors that are going into it. So you have to be careful and develop your own technique as I kind of have, or get on the internet, get on Pinterest. You can see all kinds of color management techniques where some people use clips and you know, I had that little this bull thing that I use, I showed in the last video. I did not use it at all, by the way, on this one. But the problem is, is when you're work, working with all those colors and you're trying to get situated, that sometimes when you're in a complicated area right here, that you'll hold it at a weird angle, just so you could work through with the least amount of upset. <laughs> Now, that's normally not a big deal for most people because most people have a more traditional crochet technique. However, I have a very odd one, and let me show you what happened. Now, watch my left hand. I have sort of a rock the wrap thing going on. One of the reasons this works for me is that I'm spreading the responsibility of stitching over both my hands so that no one finger or one hand uh, has to work harder than the other. And this was totally accidental on my part, but after Lyme disease, my joints are very grateful and I didn't have to develop anything new. Now, notice that this is a boy hook and I normally use a Susan Bates hook. And I am convinced that the reason some of us prefer one over another is because it has to do with our technique. And I'm noticing right now that if I substitute my normal favorite Susan Bates with my boy when I'm working on a corner to corner, it helps because of my unusual technique. So what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you may prefer one hook over another. Even if you have totally rocked another one, you may find that the other version is more helpful in certain situations. I don't know, I just thought that was worth mentioning and worth considering in case you have a problem. Well, I guess I better explain what the problem is. Okay, when I use the Susan Bates, and then when I pull through with this half double crochet, I would get these two, and then it would get stuck, and I was splitting the yarn right here. And so I'd have to hold it, push it out a little bit to get it. So that's adding a little extra movement with my right hand that I don't normally do. Now keep in mind that this doesn't normally happen to me, so it was really beginning to get me frustrated. It doesn't happen all the time, but it would happen the faster I go, if you know what I'm talking about. And it was rather challenging when I was in an especially busy color changing section. The Susan Bates is called an inline hook because the hook, the outside of the hook is in line with the uh, whatever this portion is called. And this one over here extends out. Do you see it? I actually got the boy tipped up a little bit in this picture, so the actual distance from the shaft is greater than is shown here. But you can definitely see it in this picture. That's good enough to make my point. So I'm finding that the tapered hook is a little bit more helpful when I'm working on this with my unusual technique. But the point is that one is not better than the other, they're just different. So once you find the one that works for you and your technique, you're golden. And lucky for you if you can use either indiscriminately. And then there is another simple tip that I find very useful and that is use a cookie sheet. Yeah, just some sheet pan that you have in your house or better yet, a tray if you have something like that laying around. Watch this. Now one obvious benefit of having your work on a tray is that it's easy to move. So you're sitting down, whether it's the couch or your favorite chair, you need to get up, you just move, you just get up. <laughs> 
and nothing gets messed up. And then there's another added benefit, and that is yarn management. Okay, you can see here that I've just worked all the way across in a row, and I'm about to turn my work over. And once upon a time, it was a matter of doing this and then moving all the pieces, you know, like chess pieces around so that I got them in order again. But since I've discovered this tray method, all I do is flip my work over like this, boom, and then turn my tray. And now all my work is right here, ready to go in line. See, this piece is right here and nothing is twisted up. Of course, these tiny little tails are confusing this whole demonstration, but you can see it's, it's ready to go. So that is my other reason for having a tray for doing my corner to corner afghan work. I'm really pleased with how it's progressing. Now I have to come up with a border and of course finish sewing in, sewing in all my ends. I've had plenty of them. <laughs> But I don't know, I get a really good sense of accomplishment when I'm sewing in ends. I like the feeling, I like the little stack to say, oh, look, I've done all of that. <laughs> it's also a good thing to do while you're enjoying a TV show or something like that. So it's, you know, it makes a big difference too. Got a new steamer. Now, I am not one to read reviews on Amazon. If uh, you've seen that, I don't remember if it was 2020 or something, I don't know, it was, a, it was a news report that explained how a lot of those reviews are faked. Um, quite, it was very interesting. Not that we didn't know that a lot of times that happens. However, what I like to do is get on YouTube and actually see somebody using a product and then I can tell for myself. You know, I can hear what they have to say and I can see, are they really tipping it or are they just saying that it did that. So after watching my YouTube reviews on steamers, I ended up with this one. It's not the highest price one. It's not the lowest price one. It was around, I don't know, $59, $60, I think, at the time of this filming. So I'm going to try it out. Now, several of you had mentioned those big stand steamers, which are absolutely excellent. They have a large capacity of water. They sit down on the ground, and you have this big pipe that comes up along hose and then a handheld steamer. You see these a lot in retail stores. We used to use those a lot at Thomas's school when we would get ready for military ball. And they are excellent, but I don't need anything that big. I need something that's going to be easy to store. And of course, I'm not steaming large amounts of objects at one time. So that's why I don't need that large of a capacity. However, think about it. And if you do, and you think you actually could use that thing, put that in the back burner of your mind because excellent product. Okay, here is the blanket I'm going to try to steam. And I think we can clearly see that it is not square. I've just kind of laid it out. You can see all these wrinkles. No matter how I pull it, I can't get it to lie flat. So I am going to try to steam this one nice and square. So let's look at this steamer before I get started. First of all, it can stand up by itself, so that's kind of handy dandy. I filled it up with distilled water, as we all know we should use in electronics. And look at this, you get these two little attachments. Not exactly sure the benefit of the brush. I'll read about that later. But this is a safety guard to keep you from getting too close. Now I think this would probably be fine right here. This safety guard right there is enough. But we can still put this on like that. And then that keeps us from getting too close to the garment. All right, I'm using my blocking wires. Can you see how I've put them in right there? but I've kind of got this waving action going along the edge here, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work out. I first tried putting it right through the stitches like that, but look what happens. But when you pull on it to get it where it needs to be, can you see how that uh, makes it look like loopy stitches? So I didn't want that either. So I figure the wave was the better than the loop on the edge, and um, I don't know. But I think the good news is we learned last time that if it does do kind of a wave, I can go back over it afterwards and fix it. The blocking process does make the whole process a little bit easier, and you use fewer pins too. That's a bonus. My steamer has all the red lights on. I'm assuming that's on the highest setting. I have no idea what my setting should be. It's pulling up the water. I'm learning something about this. I thought it wasn't working. You have to prime it. So you punch this several times 
and it's starting to pull up or pull that water up into the unit. So I say to do that before the first use or if it's been sitting for a really long time. Okay, seems to be working pretty well now. Well, certainly no drips and the guard is handy. Okay, so I just had to move myself downstairs because I have this one plug, only one plug for some strange reason, that I can use high power stuff with, which would be my iron and I, apparently my steamer. It doesn't happen to be near my table, so it blows my whatever that thing is and I have to go reset it in the box. Every single time I try to use something besides that plug. Now you'll notice that I took the guard off. As I was touching it after I pet made a pass, it just didn't seem warm enough to me. So I set it on high and I'm getting it closer. And you'll see I have a guard on it already. It's just, it just seems to be enough for this purpose. So what if you only have an iron and you don't want to buy this steamer? We saw in the last video that I did that, yeah, it works. It's just a little nerve wracking because you don't want to touch the hot iron to the acrylic. That'll, that'll kill it. So viewer tip, Denise uses her steam iron, but she uses a metal trivet to keep it at a safe distance. That's brilliant. Now I don't have a trivet that I want to use. I actually have one back there that's brass and I'm afraid I might scratch it or ruin it. However, what about this? A cookie rack, a cookie cooling rack. That would be perfect. You can't touch it. You just move it along with your iron. It would work perfectly. So that's an excellent tip, smart people. And Barbara was wondering if she could use her steam mop with the carpet attachment. And I thought that was brilliant too. And the key thing here, if you have a whole lot of steam coming out, you be sure to keep it moving. If you hold it in one spot too long, you actually could kill the acrylic. And Barbara may want to use a trivet or something like that to help the distance as well. I mean, there's options. Okay, moment of truth. I have taken out all the pins and now I'm going to take out the blocking wires and see how wavy it is. Oh, it's not so bad. Not so bad at all. I was really expecting it to be very, very noticeable. All right, so this is much improved. It's much flatter. Now there are some waves on those edges. Now's the perfect time to try another viewer tip to see if I can get these little waves out of the way. Look up Melanie Crochets because Melanie did a little video where she used an iron but no steam, just pulling and stretching until she got a placemat the way she liked it. I had no idea that would work. So I have an old t-shirt here. And the only thing that really worries me about this tip is I can't really see what's happening underneath. But I watched her do it and it was like magic. She knew exactly what was going on. <laughs> so apparently steam is not necessary, it's the heat. However, if you really want to see what's going on, you can use the steamer to provide your heat. It seems, seems fine. Um, and it is making my little waves lie down flat. You don't need to apply a lot of pressure because that will just flatten out your stitches. And that's another thing that the steam won't do is it won't make them look flat on the top here. But this is working. And by the way, thank you to Wynette and, and with another viewer tip and that's to protect your table while you're doing things like this. I uh, do not have my table protected because I don't have to. I got rid of all my antiques. I grew up in a house of don't touch, put a coaster down, don't put your feet on that. And when we got older and we were getting ready to move to this house, we got rid of all of our furniture like that. I only have a handful of pieces that I have to care for. And nowadays you have some awesome technology with taking wood like this and protecting it so well. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm ready for grandchildren now, one day. Okay, I really have to fight the urge not to press when I iron. It's, um, you, don't, you don't need to flatten out your stitches like that, but this does work. Steam is not necessary, it's just another avenue to help you do it. So that's good to know. 
here's the finished result. I did have to go back for a second steaming just to get it nice and square and help those edges lay down, but I'm really pleased with the outcome and I'm glad this project is completely finished. So thanks for hanging out with me. Until next time, bye. I just realized this was under there and it was making a lump. So...